Nana here. Welcome back to the second demo on this Fusion Order Management Training. So it is going to start on 22nd of this month, 22nd of October actually. And then uh, we will be covering to a good amount of extent actually. And this is my maiden training and so what happens. Uh, there will be some features here and there. Uh, and I have already implemented this for one of the customers. And then I have conducted one training for Oracle also. So this is my, in fact, what happens. Uh, the second venture as far as the training is concerned actually. Even though uh, the Oracle training was not to that great extent actually. That's why what happens. I consider this as a maiden training. And then uh, uh, we will now have a look at the agenda for what we are going to cover now. Before that, what happens, uh, I will be giving you one instance for practice and then uh, that is not exactly working very good actually. And then if it fails in between, you have to go to Hyderabad and then uh, get it hired. So Hyderabad is uh, hiring uh, or giving the instance for about 6K for three months actually. So that you can get an instance and then you can try to practice actually. <clears throat> if, it, if my instance fails actually. I will be practicing on a customer's instance, which I cannot give it to you. So what happens, that I only will be using it. So the customer's instance, I cannot give it to you. So uh, you will, I will be giving you one generic instance, which you can uh, practice on. So let us go there and then have a look at the agenda now. <clears throat> go there and then I will show you the agenda of this training now. So the training will now begin by creating an enterprise structure. Actually. Fine. We will now give the roles for an implementation user. And then I will now go on the jump into the skeleton financial setup actually by creating the legal jurisdiction and then the legal authorities the legal address everything fine go there and go ahead of this now and then we'll now create the chart of amounts value sets <coughs> then the values so you will understand a skeleton financials also find how to how the structure actually so on the created structure you are going to demonstrate everything also. so the primary ledger will be created only now afterwards we'll be having the ledger options and other associated activities on the financials one now and then uh, we will now create the ledger actually and then finally up to 24 step what happens the skeleton financial structure is now ready for us to configure it now we'll open up the first period and then what happens we'll now go ahead and then create the business units now. and then the associated setup for the business units will be taught to you and then afterwards i will now uh, go into uh, what happens acharamas by creating the jobs departments the positions and then finally an employment and then I'm going to assign, this is basically an implementation user actually. And then from that, what happens, I'm going to do everything now. I'll be provisioning so many roles for him. You know, fine. One user will be having multiple roles over here now. Right? He is a legal employee. And then I'll be giving this much of a roles for everybody. <clears throat> so that what happens, we'll be able to perform all the tasks, whatever is required for the training actually. Then I jump into inventory org, and then I will now create a, uh, what happens, the inventory org. <clears throat> fine, I'll explain what exactly is an item org, and then inventory org, the differences will be taught to you. And then afterwards, the inventory will be created, location of inventories, the carriers and transit ends will be created. Then what happens? The data access is the one which has been recently added in from release to all onwards, so that will be taught to you. We'll have the categories and catalogs, and then what happens? We'll have the item status, and then whatever relevant to inventory would be for up set up now. And finally, we'll locate the items. Right? One item, one test item will be created and then show to you. Then the basic procurement setup will be done because what happens in the advanced the fulfillment, we have to push this into purchasing now. Fine. One for the back to back buy, and then one for what happens your drop ship now so for which we will now set up the procurement only to that extent actually fine we will not be doing it a full one now we will not do this now <clears throat> and then afterwards order management setup will now begin so we will now go ahead on this now <clears throat> we will not do this and then we will now set up the order management parameters the pricing parameters the release sequence rule the pick slip grouping rule the ship confirmation rule everything will be fully taught to you the release rule <clears throat> and then afterwards the shipping parameters will be set now so we are now setting the shipping as well as what happens we are setting the order management also so uh, we don't have much of a setup as far as order entry is concerned. Now, fine. Only in the shipping, we have too much of a setup actually. So then we'll now set up the profiles and then uh, we'll now go there and then create the following items. So for the pricing purposes, we'll be getting all these items. Now, fine. One is the center, one is the tied tires, tied all tires, tied block. Fine. There are certain things which are being done. Fine. The remaining are all lab exercise. You'll be given the complete uh, pricing, uh, uh, what happens, uh, implementation guide. So through which whatever they can go hard and fine. And then afterwards, what happens? We'll now set up the global order promising. <clears throat> and then there are three rules which are associated with this one is the ADP rule, one is the sourcing rule, and then the assignment set fine, it will be top. And then what happens? It will be done for buy transfer as well as dropship items. Fine. Back to back, uh, buy transfer and dropship. Fine. Back, back to back has got two things. One is the buy and transfer, and then one for the dropship. And then what happens? We'll be demonstrating everything on this now. <clears throat> The sales order with the integration to supply chain orchestration. So we have a distributed order orchestration in order management, and then what happens? That will be invoking a supply chain orchestration process now. Fine, that will be demonstrated over here now. And then what happens? A simple order without a GOB also will be demonstrated basically. And then how the return is being processed. And then the back-to-back -back make as well as the contract manufacturing, the license is not there in my instance. And so what happens? I'll be demonstrating on a vision instance actually if I get it. I, I think probably I'll be getting a vision instance. And then I will also share with you that instance also for you to practice. Basically. So these two business processes will be demonstrated in the 
then what exactly is a DOO? And then how to customize the DOO? Will be taught over here. Fine. Now make one uh, test DOO, and then we'll now customize them. Fine. We'll now have the approval scores, and then the pre-transformation rules, credit checks, and then the order management extensions. Now fine. Go that. And then the diagnostics have done. And the customer specific pricing. <clears throat> fine. How to do that? Now fine. Now see this now. And then afterwards configure order. And then there are so many other topics. I'm just still, still learning actually. Fine. I am not an expert on this. Now fine. I'm now learning all those things. Fine. Under uh, the the agenda is under uh, construction. And then if you have any specific topics, you please send me. I will not try to uh, learn that and then also teach you over there. How the training is going to go, and then for three thousand rupees, what happens? It is a good bet actually. Fine, we'll be basically fully exposed to or introduced to the GOP fully, as well as DOO fully, and then SCO fully. Fine about that. So the supply chain orchestration, the distributed order orchestration, as well as the global order promising, you'll become what happens? You'll be having a thorough uh, knowledge of this now. Fine, with which you can very well do a lot of things now. Basically, and besides this, what happens? The pricing, you'll be having a good amount of introduction. Now. And again, there are multiple things on the pricing. Again, what happens? You can even sit and experiment on those things, how they are all working actually. <clears throat> so, this is how it's going to begin. So, this is on the agenda. And then the agenda is not under preparation. I am expecting a month's time to cover all these things. It may even go beyond because this is my first training, a commercial training, which I'm doing it. And so, what happens? I'm not very sure about how much time it's going to take now. Let us see. Let us hope that what happens. It may even go up to one and a half months also, depending upon the interaction. And then, if you have, if you know something, what happens? You share your knowledge and then let, us know, let all of us get benefited by it also. Let us go there. And then, I will now show you a demo now, basically. <clears throat> I have already done the first demo. The first demo is available at this place. You can go and have a great. Now, this is the second demo on advanced the fulfillment actually. And then you can even have uh, ask me or write to me for any clarifications of this uh, mail ID actually. And go there. The training is going to start on 9 30 p.m. to 10 45 p.m. actually. This is what it is. And then it will be for every day for six days a week. And then uh, the fees is uh, very low. Jujubi. Fine. Go there. It's a weekend. Uh, uh, what happens? You're outing along with your girlfriends. Fine. So that much of a money is only asked for. Fine. You can very well, very well bear it. Fine. It's not a big money. And then for this money, you'll be learning a lot actually. So it's approximately one month, one month. And then when you're sending a payment, what happens? Please mention your email ID otherwise. <clears throat> what happens? Two beauties will be having the same name actually. I'll be confused actually. Who has sent the payment? So it's preferable that what happens? You prefer, put an email ID on the narration and then send me a what happens? A confirmation and then get registered for the course so that what happens will be up and running very shortly. And then for any clarifications, you can write to me. And then these are the banks for, on which what happens? I'm now having the accounts now. Fine. So RBL Bank as well as HDFC Bank, you can note down, you can pass this record, and then what happens? You can note down all these things now. And then two more banks also have an account now. Fine. I'll now go down and show it to you. <coughs> fine. There's ICC Bank and then Quota Bank. So ICC Bank and then Quota Bank. Fine. These two banks also I have an account. So just note down these things, and then one of the banks, you can send it to me. And then get a confirmation and then get registered. Fine. What happens? I do not uh, wait for the last minute. And then what happens? If I am busy with some other thing, I may not be able to see mails basically. Fine. Well, that's what is. So as soon as possible, you register yourself and then uh, what happens? I will now put it on my <laughs> what happens? A mailing list. And so uh, you will be getting information upon whatever is happening on this one. Fine. So this is what is. <clears throat> so uh, we will now see in this session here yeah, one more demo, a yeah, second demo we are going to see. <laughs> There are uh, multiple ways of fulfilling the customer's needs. This is one of the advanced fulfillments. It's called back-to-back -back buying. So back-to-back -back buying, we are going to see in this scenario. So what exactly it means? <clears throat> many trading establishments will do a catalog selling. So they will have a brochure of products of very many suppliers. When a customer orders for a specific item, what happens? They will be purchased and then stocked in the warehouse. And then what happens? They will be shipped to the customer. This is the business process. Say, for example, what happens? Uh, a customer is coming. He says that I want a desktop. I want a monitor. I want a keyboard. I want a mouse. And then what happens? I want an internet connection from Hathway, and then I want a SIM card from Geo, etc. etc. So if everything you are selling, it becomes a one-stop shop for him. It's an excellent one, and then he not have to go here and there for buying everything. And then you do a catalog selling of very many products of very many suppliers. And so this becomes a beautiful business. In fact, why nowadays uh, this is now a, what happens a promising business and is a, is a emerging business of the day actually. So how to do this now? Fine. You'll now buy from the supplier and then you're going to ship it. So the implementing company will now provide also additionally support. And then after sales service, and then what happens? They will now give other value added services. Like what happens? They will now give you what happens? Two movie tickets for this. What happens? This weekend, and then you'll now have what get together at some other places, etc., etc. Apart from what happens, the item specific value added services also. Fine. You can even give an extended warranty for them. Fine with that. We can even ask them to subscribe for something. So, so many things innovatively, what happens, uh, the, the implementing company will be doing it now. Fine. So, this is an excellent business by which what happens, uh, it is attracting the customers on how to do this in the system. You're going to see it's called back to back buy now. So, let's go there and then we'll now start our activity on this now. Fine with that. So, let me go and then uh, <coughs> let me log into the system now. 
I have created a write-up and then what happens? I will not be telling you about the setups of the job. I will not directly go and then create a sales order. The setups will be fully explained in the real training. Actually, fine. You will not learn about the setups. So here, as soon as I log in now, I will go there. I will now go to the order management area. Then I will now create a sales order. Click on so click on create sales order. So we will be creating a sales order now. So let us now go on and create a sales order now. <coughs> So while you're creating a sales order, what happens? You have to choose the business unit first. In many instances, what happens? You'll be having only one business unit. In which case, what happens? You do not have to select all point here. What happens? You've got multiple business units on the vision instance. Now, point go there. So here's one business unit. I'm putting it on. Go there. I will now put the COEMP, and then there is a one standard customer which is available. I'll put it over there. And then I have already have one item ready-made. I have created. Now, point go there. It's a zero zero underscore B two B by. Give a tap. You write off of it, and then give a tap. The item gets auto auto populated, and then it will not show you how much of stock is there. So you must have either out of stock or in stock. If it says the data cannot be retrieved, what happens? It cannot be done at all. We cannot perform the sales order at all. We'll be explaining about it in the real sales order. Actually, fine. When you are discussing the setups, what happens? How to bring this one? Fine. How to bring in stock, out of stock, everything? It should not be as what data not retrieved. If the data not retrieved, what happens? The sales order cannot progress at all. Fine. It's a slightly different one when compared to eBay's basically. Click on add now. So by adding it, the line gets added up in the line level. And go there. I'll not go to the warehouse. And then let us say that I want it on different date now. And not on 9th, but on 11th. I'll not say 12th. Okay, fine. I'll not go there. So I'll not make it as 12th now. So 12th is the day in which what happens? I need it now. Fine. I'm not putting a higher date now. So it is a 12th. Day. Fine. 10, 12. 12th. 12th is, a, is actually today is 9th of October. And then I'm asking on 12th of October. And go there. So after having done this, what happens? You know, go there. So let me. What happens? Open up one more. Uh, what happens? You know, open up a notepad now. So in a notepad, no longer. So, so let me save this now. The uh, order is now saved. Fine. Remember, we need not have to mention, mention any uh, barrows at all. In EBS, what happens if we had mentioned it? If GOP is involved, now, uh, when now this item is now set for global order promising. And so what happens? Warehouse is not required at that. At the sales order stage, it's all fine. Come on, save now. By which it is not done. Sales order number will be coming. Fine. Note down the number. <coughs> So nine zero three eight seven is the one fine go there. I'll not put this down. Nine zero three eight seven is the one fine go there. Right. I'll not keep it on. I will not submit for approval. In EBS, we are going to book the order. So booking is nothing but submission. Fine, click on submit. Fine. It is equivalent to booking of sales order in EBS now. So upon submission, what happens? It will go okay. It will now be sending it for approval actually. It will not say approval is pending. But I have not configured any approvals and so what happens? It gets auto approved. Fine, click on the refresh now. It will not go to the process. Approval setups, how to set up, what happens, everything. We can even have whatever approvals you have configured in the EBS now, like what happens, the job level approvals, the position level approvals, the supervisor level approvals, and then the approval groups, etc. etc. Everything can be used over here. And whatever you have in purchasing, every approvals can be used over here now. I click on actions now, and then actions, whatever they go there. I will now go to the switch to fulfillment view. So we have to fulfill this uh, sales order. Now, this is an advanced fulfillment. We will now go to actions and then go to switch to fulfillment view. <coughs> In the fulfillment view, you will not see this. No, fine, go there. It's not coming over here. No, fine, go there. I will know in the order lines, it's not explaining what this is the order, this is the description. Fine, go there. So the quantity is one now. Fine, go there. It's all coming. So click on the fulfillment lines. <coughs> you go to the fulfillment lines. So once when you go into the fulfillment lines, fine, click on it now. We go there. It'll not see this thing now. Fine, go there. You can now see the distributed order orchestration number is coming. Fine, go there. The orders. So here, uh, the one, if you click on the DOO number, now, fine, this is called distributed order orchestration. Fine, click on it now. Which process has been used? It will not show you the process. This is now using a DOO generic process now. Fine. It's not used. For a return, it will not use a return one. For a ship only, what happens? We have a separate DOO. And for a bill only, we have a separate DOO. So many DOOs are ready-made configured. The system will be triggering the appropriate DOO based upon the item attributes. So here everything has been uh, item attribute specific you now. Fine. That has been beautifully done. So no need to what happens, uh, worry too much. And then customization of a DO is not a big job. But what happens a uh, real customization, if you want to do it, you must know ADF now. Fine. Simple customization, you can do it uh, uh, with your uh, knowledge. But what happens if you want to do a big customization, you must have the ADF knowledge because the entire thing is developed on ADF actually. So application desktop framework. So ADF knowledge is required for a uh, what happens extensive customization, but some basic customization you can do from your level itself. <clears throat> that you'll be taught, teaching one of the DO customizations this training actually. We'll now go there. You can now see that what happens. All these things have been completed. The scheduling is completed. The request orchestration it is now requested. And then what happens? This, since it is a back to back item, what happens? It is now gone there. It is now the pass activity is also completed. And then you go there. And then click on refresh now. Go there. <clears throat> so these are all the standard way of processing it now actually. Fine. It will now explain everything. Fine. Go there. So now it has gone to the waiting shipping. And then since we are given 11th of this, what happens? We have to ship it before this date. So we have to buy it and then ship it. So it is now waiting shipping. So the DOO has progressed up to this stage. 
now what happens uh, we have to release the planning recommendation i will not go there go to the right click and then go to duplicate now so in this place what happens i am now going to release the planning recommendation i will now click on the home icon in the left hand side what happens go there and then click on what the more icon of i go to maximize it now because now i expanded it i now made it big 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 basically and go there <coughs> so it is not visible here now so let me reduce it slightly so what happens i will now able to come over here now and go there and then click on the more icon now click on the more icon and then go to the scheduled processes so in the scheduled process i am going over there and go there so here i am now going to submit a new concurrent fine check on submit new concurrent this is called release planning recommendation i will now go there i will now write the release percentage plan percentage recomm percentage fine you are done now release planning recommendation so the planning recommendation it is now what happens is not having a link with planning whereas in eves it is not so so here it is not having a link with the planning now fine okay now go there this is the one which i am going to write this is not having any parameters this concurrent fine this is a dss job for ess job now and go there click on submit and i'm going to submit it now there so it's now getting submitted 153 is not submitted it will now run a series of concurrents now fine <clears throat> a series of concurrents will be running now so once when they are completed what happens there is one thing which is now uh, what happens interfacing it to supply chain orchestration actually so the purpose of supply chain orchestration is to make the inventory available on the shipping sub inventory actually from there you are going to ship it so seo's purpose is to see to it that what happens the material is available on the shipping sub inventory and then devo's purpose is what seo plus fulfillment fine it reaches the customer also so seo acts as a, what happens a subset of a, a, a devo actually so it will be done so seo will be triggered only for the back to back operations and not for normal operations by the way seo is not triggering and so on so we have one process supply chain orchestration interface is there this concurrent is now responsible for pushing it into the what happens in the in the seo area now now the supply order will gets created because of this you can now see a supply order getting created now and so this is now responsible for getting a supply order it goes there and then you know the fresh now you okay, know so here what happens if you go there i will now go to this order and i click on the refresh page now so once when i refresh it what happens you know see that a supply order will be created fine go to the fulfillment lines by the side of orchestration plan the orchestration plan is nothing but a gantt chart the gantt chart is what is a scheduling chart actually fine which activity has to be done in what way fine it is going to schedule it now the gantt chart is there so afterwards what happens you go to the fulfillment uh, lines now in the fulfillment lines what happens you go there click on the fulfillment lines now so here you will now see what happens everything coming out now here uh, there is some problem so let me what happens uh, there was some error coming up in the top is great right? so uh, let me go to the home page and then again query on the sales order now fine click on the home page and then let me query on the sales order now go there home page and then go to the order management and then let me query on the sales order now and go there it is 90387 is the number now fine go there put it on this now 90387 is the one and then click on the magnify like on it no search and then show it you know what is so here i will now go to the actions and then here what happens i will now go to the switch to fulfillment i will now go to the fulfillment view so on the fulfillment view what happens how you are going to fulfill it is not showing you i go there i will now click on the orchestration number so once when you click on the devo orchestration number it shows you on this place the orchestration plan now i go there now what happens you click on the fulfillment lines it will not show you this on the fulfillment lines you come back and then click on the supply details also fine it'll show you all this information on the fulfillment so click on the supply details in the supply details if you go down what happens you can see one one supply chain orchestration order number is now created i will now click on this now fine it is now saying awaiting supply fine there's no awaiting supply from the supplier actually fine with that you click on this hyperlink on the supply order number now it shows you the supply order number Fine. Remember, this is a subset of the Devo actually. It shows you the order number, and then here it is now showing you what happens. It is now in purchasing. It was initially in requisition, and then now what happens? It is now landed up in purchasing. It will now show in the initially requisition now because what happens? I was speaking, and then I have not shown you basically. And then here the SCO will now give you three types of recommendations. One is the buy recommendation, one is the make recommendation, one is the transfer recommendation. In this case, what happens? The buy now. I know that we will now see all the three actually in the training. So your purchase requisition is correct, created. If you go to the execution documents, it will now see what are the documents which have been created. you go to the orchestration plan what happens there are some five activities are there fine right? one is the requisition creation one is the order creation reservation then put away and then finally fulfillment the first two four activities are for seo supply chain orchestration the final one is for what happens your devo actually right? all these things are now shown over here right? it is now go there and then we will now open up what happens you go to the buy area and then go to the requisition it is the 203817 is the one fine let us now note down so it is the 203817 is the pr pr number So two zero three eight one seven is the PR number. Go there. We will now go to what happens the purchase officer's login. This guy is not a legal employee actually, <clears throat> so because he cannot do anything on this now. Fine. So let us now go to one more, uh, one more what happens the browser actually. So we have one Calvin Roth. Fine. Go there. I will now log in with the Calvin Roth, and then I will now go there. Go to the sign in. Calvin Roth is a procurement officer, and then he he can very well see this now. Fine. Go there. I will come back. 
because of uh, some long duration load of the not showing you under the Calvin. Again, Calvin process one pancake on sign and then we'll be going inside. So he is now going to process the requisition now and go click on it. So here he will now click on the purchase order number once again. No? <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> here uh, what we do is I go there, I am now into the procurement manager actually. I click on the task carousel. And then on that, I go to the process requisitions area. I click on the process requisition area. In the process requisition area, I'm going to query on the requisition number which you already taken now. I know that there's a 203817. I know that. So 203817. And then remove the buyer and then make a query now. My buyer is not required. So the requisition number is there. Thank you for making a search now. So once when you search it, it will not show you. And there is a blue eye icon now. If you click on the blue icon, it will not say. What exactly for this now? The requested goods are to fulfill the customer's orders and so don't use this for any other normal purposes. That is what it is saying now. So it is going to fulfill the customer's order. It is what I was trying to click on it. I will now select it and then here what happens, I will now go to the or, or document, add a document. In the training, what happens, I will now teach you about how to convert the PO into PO automatically. That will also be taught now. So click on add a document. <clears throat> We are now manually doing it now. And uh, since I don't have any agreement number, what happens, I am not going to put anything. I will now click on OK on this now. Click on OK. I'm looking on okay. And then I go there, I go down. So here I'm now going to create an order. I click on create order. The order number is now getting created now. So we have an order number over here now. <clears throat> we'll go there. So the order number is now created. 163226 is the order number now. We'll go there. So 163226 is the order number now. Right. No, no, the order number now. And then click on okay. And then I'll now submit for so the hierarchical approval will not take place in the purchase because what happens the procurement model is a basically a, what happens is a demand fulfillment model actually so we are now going to fulfill the demand of the sales order by buying it from this way click on submit now <clears throat> so click on submit now point go there is no submitted for approval so once when it gets approved what happens you cannot see this in this place also point go there we can even see it in what your order orchestration area in the supply orchestration area if you give a refresh now you will now find that what happens it is now in purchasing and then what happens it is now awaiting receipt it will not go to awaiting receipts actually it takes some time actually so we had to wait for it wait for it and then afterwards in the bottom what happens if you go there in the buy area also if you go to the orchestration plan see it what happens you will not get a tick mark on the purchase order the purchase order is now created so if you click on the execution documents also it will not show you these things now as of now only the requisition number is coming the purchase order number is not coming so we have the purchase order number it is not not yet updated on the SEO actually it does now go there and then receive it actually fine, go there so we will now go to this place find right click and then what happens we will now duplicate this now duplicate this one and then into one more run and then I will now click on refresh now and then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a result now of a PO result and go there. I will now go to the inventory management over here. I click on the inventory management. I'm slightly going fast because it's just a demo. And then in the real one, what happens? I won't be going at this speed now. And I will now go at a speed which is now convenient for you to understand actually. I will now click again on the task result. And then here, what happens? I will now go there. There are five such things are there. Out of which, what happens? I go to the results. I click on the results. So in the results, what happens? I will now click on receive expected results. Receive expected shipments. So I now populate the purchase order number. Now fine, it is one six three two two six. Now one six three two two six is the one. I am going to make a query on this now. Fine, click on search. I am searching on it now. Once when you search it, what happens? It now say this all. <coughs> this item is now expected from the supplier. Let us say <coughs> the supplier has supplied the product, and then I will now click on the receive now. I am now going to make it. So here, since the destination type is inventory, what happens? The receive as well as the put away will now happen in one go now. Fine. So. It will now happen in one go. So let us now click on the show result quantity. How much is expected from the supplier? It is now showing one now. I will now populate the sub inventory also. <clears throat> click on the sub inventory. I am now going to put the population sub inventory also. The sub inventory is populated. I will now click on create receipts. We can even fill up the other columns as required. And then click on create receipts. So once when the receipt is created, what happens? We can even put the shipment number over here, one, two, three. And then the packing slip number, five, over there. So four, five, six. And then we will now see how many number of packing units are there. There are four units are there. And then out of which, what happens? We can now see what is the shipping method? What is the V bill number? Fine. What is the bill of lading? And if there is any specific notes, no, fine. Handle it, care, or whatever it is. Fine. Uh, or uh, you have to keep it in the air conditioned sub inventory or whatever it is. You can now put those things. And then click on submit by which what happens a GR and the goods receipt note is now getting created on this one. <clears throat> by which what happens we are now receiving it now. So the put away activity is also completed. The receive and put away are now done in one go now. So you go there and just go to the manager orders now. What happens you now refresh it. It is now saying in purchasing now. I click on refresh now. <clears throat> you can now see that what happens is now saying PO created. Now only PO is created is coming. Here actually what happens we are now even the put away also. So the put away is also completed. Fine. It is now saying only PO created. <clears throat> 
So once when the PO created and then the putaway is also completed, what happens if we go on the done? What happens if it will say on the main sales order? If you click on done, we'll be going into the main sales order. No? On the supply chain, what happens if we go to this place? Let us now refresh over here. Now I click on refresh now. If you refresh it <clears throat> and then go to again on the fulfillment lines, when we go there, you can see it will now go to what's goods available now because now we already received it. What happens it has to progress to goods available now. If I click on refresh now again, <clears throat> it will now say what the goods are available. Goods available has to come now. If I go there, you know, this goods is available now. So now the put away activity is also completed because of it. The goods is available for shipping actually to the customers. Now I click on this hyperlink of the supply order number now and go there. It is now giving some error. I don't know why this error is coming. Mainly because what happens when I have done it, I have not run some two concurrents because of it. What happens? The error is coming actually. So here uh, the orchestration process is not progressing actually. Fine. Whatever has been received, the supply has not been updated because of which what happens? Uh, the reservation is not getting created actually. Fine. It doesn't matter. We will now leave it as such. In the reality, what happens? I'll tell you what why this error is coming. If you click on it, what happens? You will now say some error that what happens? The reservation was not created because the reservation quantity is now greater than the available to quantity. We have to run some concurrent and that will be taught in the real training actually. But metal is available for us. Now. The only thing is SEO is not progressing actually. So if you go to the buy and then here what happens? You want to proceed. You go to the higher icon and then come back to this icon. Fine, go to the come to the next one. Okay, okay. Then what happens? It will show you the requisition number as well as the PO number. If you click on the execution documents, what happens? It will show you everything. Okay. The purchase requisition, the purchase order result. And again, if you go to the orchestration class, what happens? The reservation is not getting created because of which what happens? Not it's not progressing here. Actually, it has progressed, but what happens? It doesn't matter. You can leave it. You will understand this problem when so you uh, what happens when you run it because what happens? Uh, we have to refresh the area. The GOP area has to be refreshed because of which what happens? Not throwing such error. No, fine. The into mark is coming. It doesn't matter. Fine. We will not uh, come to this area again because it will not progress at all. But reality, really, what happens? It is now gone. Fine. The item is available in the area. Goods are available for shipping actually. Goods are available. Now we will now go ahead and then ship the product. We will now go ahead and ship the product. So we are going to ship the product now actually. So what you have to do is we will now go there. We will now open up one more tab region. Go to this place. And then right click on that product. We duplicate it now. We will now open up one more tab region and then let us now receive it actually. I will now ship the product actually. I go there. Here, you go to the inventory management. <coughs> so click on the inventory management and then here <coughs> we go there. In the task or result, there are five such activities are there. I will go there. And there are five activities. We will now go to the shipments directly. And when you are performing a, what's called a transfer order, I will go there. When you are performing what happens a transfer order, we have to go to manage shipments. But when you're shipping a, what happens, a customer order, what happens, you have to go to the management things, fine. So the basic ones, and then you'll understand it gradually. But you can even go in multiple ways by even, what happens, go for the search and then do it also, fine. Now, I'm now going to ship the product and so what happens, I go to the management lines. In the shipments, I go to the management lines. And then here, what happens, I will now put the sales order number here. So I will now go to the place and then put the sales order 90387 is the one. So go there. Is the 90387 is the one. <laughs> If you give a search now, what happens? It will not show you anything at all. So what you have to do is you have to go there and then what happens? Go down and then here you have to put it. What happens? We need it on eleventh and so what happens? We have to say today in the next seven days and then make a search. So once when you search for it, what happens? It will not show you. What happens? It will not land. This is the order number now. So now the first activity is what I will now create a shipment now. Shipment number I'm going to create now. So click on auto create shipment by which what happens? The shipment number gets created actually. The shipment two five two zero three is now clear. And we'll click on okay now. So it comes over here. So the status is what. It will now see that what happens is now ready to release it. Right? The status is ready to release. Now we have to launch a pick release and then bring the item to the staging area. From the finished good area to the staging area, we have to bring it down. Fine, go there. So what is that question quantity is this now? Fine, go there. No showing up. If there is any shipping cost associated with the shipping, we can even mark it so that what happens is the costing module will not take care of the shipping cost and then it will not calculate and tell you how much money is being spent for shipping it to the customers actually. So what is so 205 is right? There's no doubt. Fine, 25203 is the one. And go there. So I will now give a save and close now. Fine. Go there. Save and close now. Let me query the two five two zero three now. <coughs> so go there. It's already there. Thank God. It says order. It is ready to release actually. So if you click and click on that, what happens? Hyperlink on this now. Fine. Click on it. it now open up again now. <coughs> so let me do the launch pick release now. Fine. Go there. We are now going to launch the pick release now. Fine. Go there. Go to the actions and then what happens? You do the pick release. Now. So once when you pick it, what happens? It will be coming from the FGS to the staging area actually. We will be explaining those uh, concepts in the training actually. I'm not going through fast now. So I will be explaining what is the FGS, what is the staging, what are the pick release, what is the ship confirmation, everything will be explained in the training actually. So it is now ready to release. So we'll now go there, it's not done and go there. We'll now give a save and close now and then come back now. You'll now see that what happens. This will be going to the stage now. It is now ready to release. Now it has got staged. Now we had only what happens. Do the ship confirmation of this now. Fine, go there. Click again on the shipment line now. <coughs> click again on the shipment line. So once when you click on the shipment line, what happens? It will be ready. 
<coughs> now <coughs> in this place how much you want to ship your data and now say i'm going to ship only one quantity and go there and then click on ship confirmation so by this what happens it gets ship confirmed and then it will be going towards the customer and click on confirmation it is now giving you a lot of warning like what happened the weight and volume has been always specified this is required for transportation management actually when transportation management needs weight and volume to be defined on the item actually so that is not required for a normal sales order i click on yes now by accept it 25203 is not done when do that it is now saying ship actually now if you go on the update the sales order fine go there go to the sales order and, go there. and then click on refresh button now it is now awaiting shipping is the status now it will now go to ship actually that wait for some time and then the status will now go to ready on the ship so it is also showing over here as awaiting shipping the order fulfillment awaiting shipping and go there this order <clears throat> and then if you go down and see this now fine go there so is a goods available now fine go there orders so click on refresh now <clears throat> refresh and now what happens it's now still showing you only as awaiting shipping now so we had to wait for some time for the sales order to get up because it has already been shipped actually now uh, you can see that what happened the status has got changed to shipped actually fine will be shipped to the customer actually and then what happens is now, now it will be interfaced to ar actually for billing actually. so it will now say go to awaiting billing actually fine. if you click on refresh now it will now go to awaiting billing so by which what happens it will now come into the ar area actually so it's not ship fine click on refresh now it will now go to awaiting billing so click on done now Right. Then, then come to the main area. The main area also will be getting updated now. Click on that now. Done. So I'm not coming. And then this area also, what happens? I'm not doing done again. And then we'll come to the main screen now. On the hard handle, what happens? No same shift. So we have to refresh and then see that it will be going to awaiting billing. So in the meantime, what happens? I will now go and then log in as a AR person now. Fine. I will now log out of the procurement officer and log out. And then let me go there and then do this now. Log in now. I click on shift out. I'll go there. It's not done. Fine. Click on confirm now. <clears throat> And now you will know what happens. There is one Tracy Allen is there. Fine, she is a receivables clerk actually. Fine, I don't know. Log in with that. So I now logged in. And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the order invoice actually. So I now click on this home icon and this one, and then click on the task cross. And then here I'm going to go to the scheduled process, and then she will be running it very frequently. She will be running as a SRS as a frequent concurrent actually. So click on scheduled new process now. <coughs> we will now do the import order invoice. Import percentage, auto percentage, and your tab now. So click on search now. <clears throat> and remember, during this training, you will be clarified on each and every point. Fine, we will not be going at this speed actually. Fine, only for the demo purpose, we are going at this speed. So before I submit it, what happens? You know, go there and see the sales order has been interfaced to what happens here or not. Fine, click on refresh now. It has to be interfaced to here or not. Fine. Now it's now saying awaiting billing. In the ship is now going to awaiting billing. Now let me run the concurrent now. Now we are going to import it. Now. So, click on it. so we are running this concurrent. So here, uh, what happens? We can now give the sales order as a reference number. The transaction source is DOO now. Drop it down and then make a change to DOO. Now. Distributed order orchestration. You know, so choosing it. And then here, uh, uh, <clears throat> we will now give the sales order number. Now, fine. The from sales order number and then to sales order number. You are going to put it now. Fine. It is nine zero three eight seven now. So it is nine zero three eight seven is the one you tap. Nine zero three eight seven is the one. Fine. Go there and then click on submit. So we are now passing on these parameters for order import now. Fine, click on it. So the AR invoice gets imported now. Fine, for the ones are it up, and then let us know. Wait for it to complete now. <clears throat> so upon completion, we can even see on the transaction lines. Now. So you can now see that commercial invoice is now getting created, and then that will be processed by the AR team. The AR team will be processing that invoice now. <clears throat> so as of now, we are only creating this now. <clears throat> fine, over there. So they will now add taxes, duties, and other things, whatever is applicable on this now. And then they will not add, and then the advance will be subtracted. Everything they will not do. So, so once when this is completed, what happens? You can go there. You click on that. What happens? The three icons on the now, and then you go there. On the receivables, you go to the billing area. Right? So, go to the receivables and the billing. In the receivables billing, we can now see the invoice coming up for you. Right? Click on this task carousel, and then here, what happens? You go to the manage transaction area. Right? Click on the manage transaction. So, on the manage transaction, I'm going to query on the sales order number. Not go there. I'm not query on the sales order number. I'm not. So, nine zero three eight seven is the one. So nine zero three eight seven is the one time go there, and then here the transaction source is what do is a mandatory one and go there. So we are now bringing in from the do one and go there. Click on search now. If you search for it, you will not see a commercial invoice which is now getting generated in the AR. You go there and then click on edit now and go there. Select it. Then here, uh, what happens if you click on the hyperlink on the eight four four zero zero? If you click on the hyperlink, 
you can now see the invoice. You can even view the image of it now. So the image will be shown here. It will be basically customized by the, what's called the customer actually. So the technical team will now customize this one, how how he want to sell it now. So different fields in different, different places. So the company's policy based upon it, whatever line total says that shipping, etc, etc, everything will be put. And then there will be a, what happens, where, where he has to send the payments and all, everything will be done, special instructions will be there. So this page will be completely customized by the technical team as per the company's policy, the company's logo and mission, everything will be done. Now. So this completes what happens, the entire cycle of what selling and then what happens, the creating invoice. So since invoice is created, what happens, the line will get closed. I go there. So click on refresh now. So by which the line gets closed. <coughs> so it is the responsibility of every CSR, the customer service representative who is dealing with the customers to close each and every header. I go there. So if all the lines are closed, the header will be closed. Otherwise, what happens, line wise, we can even close also. Everything is being closed. And then once it is closed, what happens, this activity of selling is complete actually. <coughs> he is now selling and shipping is complete now. So this way it is now working upon. So in this training, what happens, you'll be learning a lot on this now. You will learn even how to construct what happens, a skeleton enterprise structure, how to set up the business units, how to set up the inventory logs, how to set up the procurement, how to set up the order management, and then afterwards transact on the order management, and then you'll now see some other things also. So, fine. Some basic pricing, and then what happens, there are five ways of advanced fulfillments now, fine, order of which what happens, everything will be shown here now, how to fulfill it, and then some more uh, things on the sales orders. It may not be a full uh, what happens uh, thing if you know any other uh, topics of uh, what of interest, you please tell me, I will not try to learn that, and then I will not do it also. Fine, so, uh, in fact, what happens, it will be a very good uh, what happens, uh, it's an eye opener for you on the order management, and then you'll be able to understand, and then you can start to work on it immediately. The only problem is what the instance which I'm going to use may not be working perfectly throughout the course actually. And then if it doesn't work, uh, because it's not already having some problems, you may have to hire an instance in Hyderabad. Apart from that, I'll be giving you all the documentation for you. So everything else will be given to you so that you will now understand this. So please pass out this message to your friends also. Fine. So that what happens, there will be some more people. And then what happens, uh, it's a benefit for me as well as what happens, a benefit for you. It's a mutual benefit. It's a win-win situation for both of us now. Fine. So I hope that what happens, uh, you are enjoying my training. And then my coverage is always in-depth. And then uh, what happens, I'll be explaining you at every part. Whenever you have any doubts, I'll be stopping and then explaining. I'll not be going just like that. Now, fine. This, since what happens, I only speak. It is a monologue. It is not a dialogue actually. In a training, what happens? Uh, both of us will speak actually, so that you can now get your uh, doubts clarified. And then, if you are now finding it, if you want, I will now repeat certain things uh, whatever I told in the training now, right? so that you will now find it really very really useful. So, bye for now, and then we will not try to meet on the next video. And then, uh, uh, what happens? Uh, there are some free videos I'll be uploading now and now and then, and then you can watch them and then you can get them. Right? So, write to me for any clarifications at nana.app60 at gmail.com. Right? So, wish you all the best for a prosperous career in uh, fusion apps. Fine, bye for now. <laughs>